The January transfer is just a month away and Liverpool are expected to spend big this winter as they look to bring in reinforcements after an inconsistent start to the season. In today's video, we provide you with the player that the club are in talks to sign and we also take a look at the club's new doctor who has just been appointed after a four-month search. We also go over who Liverpool have drawn in the third round of the FA Cup and also take a look at the Liverpool 7 who are competing in the World Cup. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. Before we get into today's video, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Liverpool have been without an official club doctor since the surprise departure of Jim Moxon a week before the new season got started. Since then, two academy staff doctors have been fulfilling the role, while Head of Recovery and Performances, Dr. Andreas, has increased his duties. The lack of an official club doctor has led to some questions over the amount of injuries in Klopp's squad in the opening months of the season. However, with such a large medical department, I do believe these claims are slightly off the mark. Now, though, the club have appointed Power, who had previously worked for the Football Association and with Brentford. Power's work has also seen him act as a consultant specialising in musculoskeletal problems and injuries, described as one of only a few highly trained specialist doctors in this field. At Liverpool, he'll work closely with the Reds medical department, which includes Andreas, physio Chris Morgan, head of fitness Andreas Kornmeyer, head of nutrition Mona Nemmer, and prevention and performance physio Lena Aschenbrenner. As we all know, we are halfway through the World Cup, which means we are getting closer to the start of the January transfer window, which I mentioned in the intro, Liverpool are expected to spend big on a fair few additions. Today, reputable Dutch journalist, not Mike Verish, claimed that Liverpool have entered the race to sign Mohamed Kudus. Kudus is a Ghanaian international who currently plays for Ajax Amsterdam and started his career in the Danish Super League after leaving the Right to Dream Academy, of which he joined at 12. Kudus has so far had an impressive season, playing 21 games and scoring 10 goals in all competitions, which for a midfielder, that is incredibly impressive. The Ghana international is currently competing at the World Cup and the report went on further to state that Liverpool have sent scouts out to Qatar to explicitly watch him. Whilst Liverpool have been touted for a move, the Reds are not only the European side interested in the midfielder. As last season's winner and current cup holders, the Reds hosted the FA Cup third round draw at Anfield on Monday evening. Liverpool had been drawn at home to Wolverhampton Wanderers, with the tie taking place at Anfield around the weekend of January 7th. It is the fourth game currently scheduled for January, with the potential for three more ties that month if they progress in both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. This tie is set to land the same week as a trip to Brentford in the Premier League, which is on January 2nd, which marks the first fixture of 2023. Wolves are currently bottom of the Premier League, having won just two of their 15 games so far, losing nine with manager Bruno Large, who was sacked at the start of October. The World Cup has now played out through two rounds of group stage games, with Liverpool players having a positive tournament so far. In this part of the video, we're going to go through the Liverpool 7 and see how their nations have got on as we go into match day 3. Jordan Henderson and Trent Alexander-Arnold, England England drew their second match against the USA, 0-0, with just Jordan Henderson featuring off of the bench to make a 20-minute cameo. Trent Alexander-Arnold was again an unused substitute. England are very close to securing a place in the last 16 and will qualify on match day 3 if they avoid losing 4-0 or more to Wales who are currently bottom of the group. Virgil van Dijk, Netherlands Van Dijk again played the full 90 minutes in the Netherlands 1-1 draw to Ecuador and like England, the Dutch are very close to qualifying for the last 16 with their final match against already eliminated Qatar taking place on the 29th of November. Canate, France Canate featured off of the bench in the holders 2-1 win over Denmark with the Frenchman playing 27 minutes. France have already qualified for the last 16, but will play their final match against Tunisia on the November 30th, and a draw will confirm France as the group winners. Alisson and Fabinho, Brazil 
Brazil also qualified on Monday after beating Switzerland 1-0, which sent Alisson complete another 90 minutes. Fabinho, though, on the other hand, was again an unused substitute and still awaits his involvement at the World Cup, but with them already being through, he could play in the final match against Cameroon on December 2nd. Darwin Nunes, Uruguay Finally, Darwin Nunes played 72 minutes in Uruguay's 2-0 defeat to Portugal, which thanks to South Americans' pursuit to qualify to the final match day, where they take on Ghana and must win. The match will take place on the 2nd of December, and hopefully Darwin can get on the score sheet for the first time in the World Cup. Legendary right-back Cafu has came out and said that he doesn't understand the criticism of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Over 11 years in Europe with AC Milan and Roma, and a 16-year-old international career with Brazil, Cafu established himself among the world's most accomplished right-backs. Speaking to Gazeta Dello Sport, Cafu compared the 24-year-old situation to that of himself and Roberto Carlos throughout their careers. He said, I don't understand why he attracts criticism. He's the full package. He has quality, dribbling skills and pace. But it's always the same thing. They say you don't defend and sit you out. They used to do the same thing with me and Roberto Carlos, but I'd argue we'd managed to win something anyway. Alexander-Arnold is not expected to start in England's final game of the World Cup group stage, though Gareth Southgate is due to make some changes against Wales. Finally, former Liverpool coach Michael Beale, who served as Steven Gerrard's assistant manager at both Glasgow Rangers and Aston Villa, has been appointed Rangers 18th manager. Beale, who was appointed as QPR manager in the summer, had a strong start in West London, with a 42-year-old approach by Premier League side Wolves around a month ago. Mick turned Wolves down at the last minute, and in an interview with QPR's official channels, he said, integrity and loyalty are big things for me, and they are the values you live by and have to be strong. I have to be all in here, I have asked other people to be all in, so I can't be the first person to run away from the ship. Just over a month after that though, Bill has now agreed to rejoin Rangers, this time as the manager heading back to Glasgow to replace the departed Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Bill returns to Rangers, having seen his QPR side go without a win in five games, with four defeats and a draw coming after a 2-1 win over Wigan, two days on from his defiant interview. A vocal presence on social media, Bill deactivated his Twitter account amid speculation over his move to Scotland, having attracted fierce criticism from QPR fans. His decision is certainly a questionable one, but the lure of returning to Rangers was clearly too strong to pass up. Bill remains one of the brightest young coaches in football, having cut in his teeth at various roles at Liverpool Academy, including as an under-21s manager. Liverpool fans, what do you make of the news that the club are seriously interested in making a move for Mohamed Kudus, and do you think he'd be a good addition to the midfield? Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. Please do smash that like button, and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.